Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today I have another update on the 1600 gallon system. I want to talk about all aspects of the 1600 gallon system. I'm going to start by talking about the 720 gallon tank, the 480 gallon tank. We'll even go back into the fish room, talk about how the filtration is running, the new calcium reactor, the refuge tank, because there's been a lot going on in the system in the last few weeks. I really want to share with everybody some of the great things that have been happening in the 1600 gallon system. Let's get started. Take a look at the 720 gallon tank. 720 gallon aquarium has been really doing good. I couldn't be happier with the way that this tank has been going. The fish are all doing great. And you might have noticed I did add some new fish to this tank. There were three angel fish added to this tank a juvenile annularis angel, a flame angel, and a coral beauty angel. They're all put in at the same time. They've all been doing really good. They've been in the tank about a week and a half now, and everybody's getting along good. The other fish just didn't really seem to care that they got added. The purple suit chromis didn't really seem to care, and neither did the damsels, which are the fish I really assume might give the angels a hard time. And you might notice that the algae in the 720 gallon tank is not looking nearly as bad. And that's because about two and a half weeks ago, I came into the tank and I wanted to just pull a little bit of the hair algae away from the Blue Ridge Coral. And when I tried to pull it out, a massive gob of hair algae came out in my hand. It was starting to detach from the rocks. And I thought that was really the sign that said an intervention on the algae needs to start in the 1600 gallon system. The phosphates and nitrates are testing zero, and with the algae detaching from the rock, it's telling me that it's starting to slowly die and just re-release nutrients back in the tank, which means it's just gonna start this perpetual cycle of algae over and over again. And I figured I might be able to slow it down, if not even stop it and eliminate a lot of the algae in here if I can get in and remove a big chunk of it. It's been about three hours. I scrubbed down all the rocks. I scrubbed the big shelf off. I even scraped the bottom of the tank down. And since it's been two and a half weeks, some of the algae has come back, but it hasn't come back with nearly as much ferocity as it did the first time it was grown. And I stopped working on the 1600 gallon system after I did the maintenance on this. The visibility was highly reduced. I put filter socks in, and I went to clean this algae off. A lot of it I was able to just siphon it off with a small tube and just pulling it off but some of it was on there pretty good and I wanted to try and get as much off. I was using a small little toothbrush to try and get algae off in the other tank and this one to a certain extent but that just wasn't going to do the job. I went and bought a couple of heavier scrub brushes. I picked them up both at Target. They're heavy plastic brushes. This one's got a real heavy duty side on it as well as a standard. And these did a really good job. I soaked them in RODI water for about a half hour, 30 minutes before I used them just to make sure there wasn't anything on the surface of them. Most brushes like this aren't going to cause any kind of harm to an aquarium for short term use. But they did a great job and really helped to reduce the amount of algae in this tank overall. And I'm thinking this weekend I might even come back in and do a second round in this tank. Bear in mind there is literally one snail, one sea urchin, and one fox face that eat the algae. And the angelfish might pick at it a little bit, but really there's not a whole lot in the way of cleanup crew that can handle it. Not too concerned about it, because the algae of the 480 gallon is the primary concern to get rid of. And when I started with this tank, I pulled the algae out of here rather than the other tank because it was doing that detachment of the rocks. I also tweaked the lighting that's on here. I have three AI Vega colors that I had from a previous tank, and that's what lights the 720 gallon tank. I took the green and red LEDs and turned their percentages way down to like one or two percent. And I'm not sure if that change in LED spectrum is gonna make a difference, but those two color spectrums can contribute quite a bit to algae growth at times. So I turned them down, I turned the whites up, and the blues have kept at a high percentage in the 90s. We'll see how the tank does, and I think I'm gonna add more in the way of cleanup crew to it once I get the 480 gallons algae completely under control. The puffers have been doing good. All the fish have been doing good. And I just couldn't be happier with this display and the way it's turning out. I'd love to start adding a few more corals in here. And I think I will. I've been really getting torn on adding corals though. 
I see so many nice ones out there and I have to be a little selective to stay on my budget. And I've been focusing more on getting corals into the 480 gallon reef tank. But there'll definitely be some more added in here over time. I don't mind if the angelfish pick at any of these corals. I put them in here knowing that could happen. I also have a lot of different fish that I want to add into this aquarium, but I'm gonna really take my time with it. Now that I can you know, kind of get my fix on getting some new animals by getting some corals, I've been kind of mixing it up a bit and I've been getting some corals and then purchasing a handful of fish, letting them sit in the tank for, you know, two, three weeks, and then I'll go ahead and add some more. And I just can't wait to see what this is gonna look like in another year or so, when I really start to get it loaded up with fish. As far as maintenance beyond the algae scrubbing goes, I have taken the waiver pumps off. As I was doing all the algae scrubbing, the algae buildup on them was getting really heavy. I gotta say the maintenance on these Rossmont waiver pumps is pretty darn easy. Just took the cover off, wiped it all down, and the algae floating around the tank really didn't get this Rossmont pump clogged up all that bad. So it was a quick cleaning, I got them back in place, and I'm thinking I might even potentially add a couple more of these pumps. I'm not gonna put them on a controller, I'm just gonna put them in and let them blow water around. I have an immense amount of flow in this tank. It's probably approaching about 10,000 gallons per hour of just water flow in the tank. That's the two pumps and also the return. But if I add a couple more of these Rossmont pumps in, they each do about 4,100 gallons per hour of water flow. If I do that, it'll really bump up the amount of water flow in here. I think it'll probably settle out just the way I want. The fish love the flow. They're always hanging out in it. They never seem to have an issue with it. And since it's bare bottom, I don't have to worry about sand blowing anywhere. But I'm really happy to see this tank progressing along. Hopefully in a few more months, I'll get all this algae cleared out of here and I don't even have to worry about it in this tank. Let's move on to the 480 gallon tank. And I'll show everybody just what's been going on there. The 480 gallon tank is looking awesome right now. I couldn't be happier with the way the tank is looking. And if you notice, there is almost no hair algae left in this tank. I'll admit, there still is some in here and I've got a little ways to go on this, but I think I might be getting closer. Like the 720 gallon tank, I decided that it was time to take some more active measures in the 480 gallon tank. I didn't do it the same week as the 720 gallon tank, but last weekend I decided it was time to go to war with this algae. My nitrates and phosphates were still testing zero, which means it's time to 
get in here and remove as much of this algae as possible. I originally had started using a toothbrush in this tank and was doing it every now and then, but it just wasn't enough. It's nice to be able to get around some of the more delicate corals like the acros or anything that's glued down. I don't want to damage any of my corals, but that toothbrush just wasn't going to do the job. And I ended up getting the big brushes out again. And I went through all the rock in the whole 480 gallon tank. It took me about four hours worth of cleaning. I tried to really scrub out everything that I could. Some of this algae just did not want to let go of the rock. Unlike the 720 gallon tank where most of it just pulled off, there were tufts of this algae where I tried to pull it off the rock and literally started picking the rock structure up because it was holding on so tight. And it really wasn't expanding its growth very much. It was just growing wherever it had been. And all the little spots that had been cleaned off by the urchins all the way down to bare rock weren't coming back. But any place where they left a little behind was just regrowing constantly. And I noticed that if I had taken the toothbrush and scrubbed a rock really good and gotten all the algae off, it wasn't really coming back. And I decided these heavy duty brushes could do a good job to try and get all of it off. And so far it's been a little under a week and I haven't really noticed any algae coming back in those places yet. Time will tell. I don't know if this is going to be a final solution. I will say if it does start to come back at all, I am going in there with these brushes again and I'm going to get rid of it again. And just yesterday, I tested my nitrates and phosphates again just to make sure that doing all this massive cleanup and scrubbing of this stuff wasn't releasing a ton of nutrients out of the water and they're still testing zero. I had used filter socks in conjunction with a protein skimmer and I removed a ton of this algae. The skimmer went crazy after I did this cleaning. And I'm assuming that the corals in here also benefited a little bit, got some filter feeding action out of it. The sand bed's been doing good though. And I wanna add more sea cucumbers to the sand bed. I know most of my tiger tail sea cucumbers are still thriving in here. They've been migrating slowly through the tank. I can see them kind of popping out from under rocks here and there. The sand stars and the conchs are doing good. I even found that I had some serith snails that are in the sand. They come out at night. I didn't purchase any of these, but I know they must have come in as tiny little babies from the live sand that I put in the tank several months ago. Probably gonna add more of those serith snails because the one thing I have noticed is the wrasses in here don't really seem to care about them. The wrasses have more or less trained the snails and the few hermit crabs that are in here that going out during the day and eating algae is a really poor idea. But when the lights go out, everything starts coming out. There's snails all over the place and they start going to town on this algae. And I'm hoping that removing a lot of this algae by hand really can make a difference and allow the cleanup crew to kind of catch up and maintain the rocks. I got urchins all over the place that are working really hard to keep the rocks clean. And I'm hoping that I get to the point where I clean off all this algae. I'm going to take a few of those urchins, migrate them to the 720 gallon tank and allow them to start working on the hair algae in there. If I start seeing algae continuously coming back here, I'm going to add another UFO light to the 150 gallon refuge tank and try to get that algae growing in that tank as opposed to this. This is the cleanest this tank has looked though since December when I added my radion lights. I'm happy to say though that I'm okay with algae being in the tank as long as I can keep it under control. I film algaes and stuff aren't a big deal. I just want to see this hair algae stuff go away. I think I'm well on the way to getting there and it's just a matter of time. The surprising thing I've noticed too is that there's a lot of coralline algae on the branch rock. It might not be so apparent in the camera, but it is there also added a couple of new rocks to the tank and I have a few more to add. If you remember when I went to the Chicago Aquatic Experience, Carib Sea graciously donated me some of their life rock to try out in my system. I told them I wanted to make a video on it, but when I was getting ready to do it, the algae bloom was really taking hold in here. I didn't think it was fair to put the Carib Sea life rock in during an algae bloom. It's more than likely just going to get covered up by nuisance algae. You really wouldn't be able to see what a nice rocket is. I got this one piece right up front here, which I put some ant cans on there. These are new corals. I just picked them up from 
one of my local fish stores, Blue Line Coral. And I want to make this a little Ancan garden. I might put another piece of life rock next to it, make it a little bit bigger island. Kind of expand where I could do this little Ancan garden. But I think it's going to look nice. These corals are really close to the front, so I got a good observation area for them. And I can really see the nice colors that they have. My wife really enjoyed picking these out too, so she's going to have a lot of fun picking out more and more corals for this tank. On the SPS side of the tank, not a whole lot has changed. I added a couple of acro frags a while back. Everything is still alive and doing okay. Some of these acros, more than others, are showing signs of growth. And unfortunately, when I was cleaning algae, I did break a couple of them off the rocks and snap a couple branches on them as well. I did kind of glue the frags down. Although I see one of the little frags I glued down is missing, I'm assuming that sea urchin toppled it over, just snapped it off the rock. But everything else seems to be doing good and I'm really happy to see some nice signs of growth in SPS. I am not an SPS expert by any means. This is my first big attempt to get into these corals. But the fact that I'm seeing growth and they're still all alive after a few months is kind of impressive to me because I've just never really tried to keep them before. And in the last instances I did, I really wasn't set up to do it properly. This rock island right up front here, I also kind of resurrected. It was buried in the sand pretty deep. I decided that because there's no structure on top of it, and there never really will be, it's just a couple of rocks. I pulled it out of the rock, made it a little bit higher, and I decided that instead of putting sea anemones on it, which was kind of the original plan, I had this nice Gargonian frag that I picked up from my local fish store, Reef Plus, and the Lemani frag I picked up from them, and then this Fabia frag that I picked up from Blue Line. And I decided to kind of put them on here. I want to see if I can get this Gargonian growing out on this rock. And then I want to put some other encrusting corals on here. I might get some other Fabias and Monis and, and put them all over this rock and kind of let them encrust around on it. I think it'll look really nice. The midsection of the 480 has been also looking really good. I cleaned this whole shelf off of algae. So it actually looks a lot shorter than it used to because I'm used to there being like two to three inches of hair algae waving around here. The one monophora that was over here is kind of recovered. It had some algae growth that was on it, but it seems to be kind of fading away now. And it has some good growth on it despite all the problems it had with the algae. That chalice back there has also been growing like crazy. It's definitely gotten bigger. I did knock it off the rock, unfortunately, while I was cleaning. and. Those rocks kind of shifted back there, but I remounted it and it looks real happy. There's uh, another branching digitata back there, which is doing really nice. The orange satosa frag is also looking good back there. I can't really tell if it's grown yet, but it's still colored up and it's still looking good. So that seems to be working out okay. And the Duncan coral back there is already starting to sprout some new little heads on it. It loves that spot. It's always opened up really nice. It's got really high water flow in that area. So that coral is just jamming there and I hope that it really turns into a nice big colony. I really like the way those corals just look in all the water flow. The one leather coral isn't really opened up this week. Not surprised though, it's kind of wedged between a couple of rocks and I moved things around a lot when I was cleaning the tank and I didn't rip it between the two rocks. I kept it there. So I think it just needs some time to kind of balance itself out. So hopefully it'll start opening up again here real soon. Let's look at the final section of the 480 gallon tank. The LPS garden is looking great. The sea anemone is getting big. I'd say it's got to be about five, six inches across easily. And you'll notice that I added a maxima clam to the tank. It's only been in there about a week. It was really nice looking clam though. And I am kind of a clam junkie at heart. I saw this one came in, really looked nice. It looks blue from this angle, but I'll do some top down shots on it. It looks totally different from above, which is one of the things I really enjoy about clams. And one of the reasons that I made this tank shorter and put a walking platform behind it so that I could get that beautiful top down view of everything. All the LPS have been growing, doing really good. I couldn't be happier with the way this tank is looking as far as corals go. Everything is just looking so nice. This beautiful collage of colors coming in here. And the fish are just really accenting everything nicely. 
it really makes me start to wonder what this tank's gonna look like in another year or two. That's the 480 gallon tank though. Let's do a quick tour of the fish room and I'll show everybody what's been going on in there. The fish room for the 1600 gallon system has been working out really well. I haven't really had much in the way of issues. The protein skimmer has been performing really good. I haven't had any issues with the top getting pushed off or anything like that from skimming. The only thing I had happen a couple of days ago is I noticed there really wasn't any skimmate getting pushed into the cup and one of the restrictors on the outflow of the skimmer had fallen off and the water stopped running through the skimmer. I think it was doing that for about a day or so, which isn't a huge deal, but I got that corrected right away, which again goes to just making sure you keep a close eye on what's going on in your aquarium at all times. The UV sterilizer has still been working good, haven't had any issues to speak of with that. And the calcium reactor, I'm still working on tuning it in. I've really been taking my time with it. Since it's on a manifold with the UV sterilizer and the 150 gallon refuge tank, I've been having a little bit of difficulty with controlling the water flow in it. I think I might have it taken care of now. I was restricting water on both the refuge tank and the UV sterilizer a bit to try and put a little bit more pressure onto the calcium reactor line but really it didn't have that kind of effect when I opened up the line unrestricted for the UV sterilizer, actually started having a lot more in the way of water flow that was controllable through the calcium reactor. I'm gonna continue to monitor this and I've been increasing the drip rate slowly and also increasing the amount of CO2 that's been going into the calcium reactor. And I had the pH down in the calcium reactor to about 6.6 .6 and, and I kind of been backing off from it, increasing the affluent rate, letting it raise up. I think I've gotten a little bit better control onto my calcium and alkalinity depletion. In this last week, I've only added about two cups of calcium and alkalinity from the two-part mix, which tells me that the calcium reactor is definitely making a difference. Just trying to take it really slow. I don't want to overdose with the calcium reactor because that's just going to cause me all kinds of problems and because I have a lot of corals in the tank already I don't want to overdose my calcium and alkalinity and spike those levels. Overall though I'm really happy with my calcium reactor purchase so far. I think it's just a matter of getting past the tuning but I like what it's doing. I've been really happy with it. I like the controls I have set up on it. I feel confident and the way it's set up and how it's performing. And the 150 gallon refuge tank has also been doing good. I just had an update on it. The algae's still growing like crazy in it. Just did a small harvest of it today, just to pull a few pieces out. I'm not gonna try and get too much out of there yet because I want it to continue growing heavily in that space. And hopefully it keeps it out of the displays. And I've really been happy with the way all the equipment's been running in the fish room. That's what I wanted to cover in today's 1600 gallon system update. Tried to go pretty in depth with a few things, so I hope everybody appreciated that. If you did, go ahead, give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you liked the video today. And I'm really interested to hear what everybody has to say in the comments section. Tell me what you think of the 1600 gallon system. There's things you like, don't like, things you wanna know more about. Let me know in the comments. I try to respond to everything as quick as I can. And I might just make a video about your comment. I've done it before, the water changes video that I just made this last week was a direct result of people asking me questions and comments in the YouTube video. And I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and everybody out there that's watching my channel on YouTube. Thank you very much. This channel has just surpassed 100,000 views. It's a huge milestone for me and I really can't believe that number when I look at it. I'm very happy to see it and I want to continue bringing everybody good content on this channel about the aquarium hobby and the progress of the 1600 gallon system. And if you want to see the journey of the 1600 gallon system, how it goes, the ups and downs that I face with this system, go ahead, hit that subscribe button along with the bell notification. I've been putting out two videos a week and sometimes I even do a live stream just to talk about this system and general topics about the aquarium hobby. Thanks again for watching everybody and I will see you on the next video.